Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Serati and welcome to a video which I myself have been waiting to do for quite a while and that was finally made possible last Friday. With the new expansion of Hawaii we got new story notes explaining the events which took place here and adding more to the already vast lore of Unturned. So I have taken these notes piece them together and I am going to present to you the story of Hawaii. Now before I start I'd like to thank all the people on Reddit and Discord who helped me find all of the pages as there were quite a lot of them, it really is my work. Anyways, let's begin. Sometime around the outbreak in Washington caused by Scorpion 7, a research and pharmaceutical company called Aegis sets foot on the uninfected island on Hawaii and sets up a laboratory atop Mauna Kea to harvest what they call possible vaccination materials for a potential cure against the zombie virus, as mentioned in this note inside the facility. A gardening shop employee in Hilo notices the arrival of the company and explains in a note that they might be after a certain type of mushrooms growing in the caves of Hawaii which are referred to by the ancient culture as all curing fungi. Another note at the hospital in Waikoloa mentions that after some studies these mushrooms appear to have the same medicinal effects as the vaccines they were using at that time which they were running out of. This may be the reason why Aegis came to the island in the first place, but we can't know for sure. The American government, however, is not very happy with Aegis' exploiting of the volcano, so they set up two forward operating bases in order to monitor and contain them, however the company continues expanding their activities underneath the mountain, in spite all of that, and start kidnapping test subjects from around the island, aiming to complete their job as soon as possible, as written in a technician order note inside their laboratory. In the meantime, the zombie infection slowly starts showing up. More and more people start displaying symptoms similar to those of the turn on the American continent, most likely due to the people who managed to escape Aegis' laboratories as well as the toxic debris thrown away by them around the island. A doctor observes this phenomenon and states in a note that as their hypothesis implied, the infection had somehow reached Hawaii. Very interesting proof of Aegis' inhuman acts consists of two notes written by a group of refugees settled in a cave northeast of Bahala. One of them describes an Aegis truck stopping them over, handcuffing and most likely abducting one of them and leaving only a few to escape in a gunfight. The other one describes the sight of a shining object in the waters beyond the lighthouse, most likely Tadaki Light, believed by them to have been some sort of ship which by the time they got there had disappeared. They then decide to set up some flares and alert nearby ships in order to escape, following up by saying that they're afraid of revealing their position to Aegis. It is pretty clear by now that Aegis secured much more space than the area of the volcano and was now unofficially controlling the island, making its residents fear them more than any actual infection, which makes them far worse than Scorpion 7 could ever be. The military noticed these undergoing activities and sent scouting teams to investigate. At some point, the Elani, an American ship destroyer surveilling the area, gets rammed by an Aegis ship west of Holokai Harbor and gets irradiated due to radioactive materials that the vessel was carrying, making rescue missions impossible. A cruise liner with an infected passenger on board was passing by and was kept on the water for entire days straight, as stated by a witness in a journal entry. The vessel was entirely compromised by the virus as the last surviving crew members decided not to swim to the mainland, which was now a deadly battlefield between the military and Aegis forces. The company mentions in its last notes findings of ancient tiki altars and turned subjects appearing in pools of magma, possibly referring to the fireproof properties of certain zombies as the ones mentioned in the Soul Crystal Laboratory notes on Russia. Alika base gets overran by zombies and loses communications with the two outposts. The American soldiers, low on supplies and wrecked by ages, regroup with the Coast Guard and retreat, leaving the company to slowly fade under the pressure of the infection. 
The remaining crew establish a safe haven in the south of the island, as written by a civilian at Kahale Development, and leave announcements throughout the cities to bring in remaining survivors. Thus, the unyielding is born, following up in the footsteps of the mighty coalition. One of the unyielding members, named Neil, asks you to find his friend Hannah. Once you retrieve a letter from Hannah, found at a worshipping place called La Luna Kahiko, you get sent to the lighthouse at Tadaki Light, where you find this note about an altar in the same place where the letter was found. Once you activate it, as well as other two hidden inside the map, and reach the Tiki Tomb Room in the heart of the volcano, it is up to you to face the wrath of the mountain, the same mountain that ages disturbed. This is the story of Hawaii. The volcano is angry. We need to offer a sacrifice. Kilroy, find something quick. I got it. You have disrespected the gods by throwing garbage into the volcano. Okay. Let's not panic. We'll find a way out of here. We need to get out of here. 